a favorite statistic by those who uh, oppose the idea of traditional marriage. Um, I'm speaking primarily here of, of the majority of those on the same-sex marriage uh, advocacy side. You'll get a, one of the most common little facts that they like to bring up is the low divorce rate in Massachusetts. The d Massachusetts, the one state that recognizes gay marriage, well, now also Connecticut, that this state has the lowest divorce rate. And they want you to think, wow, they must really, you know, value marriage in Massachusetts. Let me put forward to you an analogy to give you an idea of, of the error in this thinking. Say you had uh, the rate of children that survive to adulthood. Say you had, you know, a, a nation that had the best rate in the whole world of this, of kids that survive to adulthood, had the best rate of that. Now, would that mean, um, what could you derive from that if you were looking at the net picture of population growth? So if you're looking at and the, the overall health of the of the particular country. How much could you, information could you derive from that? Now, you could derive some, but not really a whole lot. For example, say that same country that had the highest uh, rate of children surviving past the, um, well, surviving into adulthood, say that same nation had the lowest fertility rate in the world. What if that fertility rate was like, say, half that of what you need for a placement, like 2.1? So half that would be, you know, around one child per woman per lifetime. Would it mean a whole lot in the long term, you know, come next generation, for the population of that nation, for the demographic makeup of that nation, if they remained, you know, around that one woman per child per lifetime rating, even if they kept the highest uh, rate of, of children surviving into adulthood, what would that mean? In the net picture, if you're looking at the whole picture, it wouldn't mean a whole lot. The same thing is the case you know, with Massachusetts. Uh, just for a comparison here, I did the per capita marriage rates and divorce rates for the year 2000, because that's um, as far as reliable data for figuring out the ratio and the per capita numbers, that's the best I could find on the internet. So in the year 2000, Utah had a divorce rate almost twice that of Massachusetts. And everybody would go, oh, in Mormon, Utah? Twice the divorce, almost twice the divorce rate of Massachusetts. But then you look at the per capita marriage rate at the same time, and it turns out that three times as many people were getting married in Utah as were getting married in Massachusetts. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means a lot for kids. Say you have a couple that get together, decide to shack up, decide not to marry. Hmm, marriage. You can do it or you can't. It's a choice. They decide to shack up and uh, a child ends up coming out of their union. Now say they break off a bit later and you still got the child there. All of a sudden you have a single parent household. But you don't have any recourse and you don't have any tracking for that as far as this being a child of divorce. Um, what is the effective difference to the child? Not a whole lot. Had a father, now he doesn't. Or had a mother, now he doesn't. Or she had a father, now she doesn't. She had a mother, now she doesn't. The only difference is, of course, we don't ever describe that as a failed marriage because they never got married in the first place. But is it any kinder on the children? Is it any better for society that all of a sudden, we don't care enough about people, you know, to go and bring a child into this world to uh, keep track of, you know, what children get abandoned by one parent or the other. 
So keep that in mind next time you hear somebody say, Massachusetts has the lowest divorce rate in the nation. Remind them that they also have a marriage rate that's one-third of that in Utah. And I've got other states, I'm putting them in a spreadsheet here. But it's funny that the most likely states, the, the states that the avant-garde, the, the forefront of, of gay rights, are also the states that least value marriage as far as being something to enter into. It doesn't mean they necessarily don't have kids simply because they don't enter to marriage. Uh, they just don't care enough about the kids to provide the kids the, the visibility of, of being seen as an abandoned child. So, anyway, think about that. And don't don't fall for the crap, because they'll put out one side of the statistics and they won't put out the other.